Good evening, and thank you for standing by for New Oriental's FY 2021 third quarter results earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After management's prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. And I'd like to turn the meeting over to your host for today's conference, Ms. Sissy Zhao. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Oriental's third fiscal quarter 2021 earnings conference call. Our financial results for the period were released earlier today and are available on the company's website as well as on Newswear services. Today, you will hear from Stephen Yang, Executive President and Chief Financial Officer. After his prepared remarks, Stephen and I will be available to answer your questions. Before we continue, please note that the discussion today will contain forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provisions of the U.S. Private Security Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Forward-looking statements involve inherent risks and uncertainties. As such, our results may be materially different from the views expressed today. A number of potential risks and uncertainties are outlined in our public filings with the SEC. New Oriental does not undertake any obligation to update any forward-looking statements, except as required under applicable law. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. In addition, a webcast of this conference call will be available on New Oriental's Investor Relations website at investor.neoriental.org. I will now turn the call over to Mr. Yang. Stephen, please go ahead. Thank you, Sisi. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the call. With the pandemic largely controlled in China, albeit a small way for outbreak in the northern part of the country, our business navigated the challenges and so strong momentum in recovery. We are pleased to announce a set of financial results in the third quarter of this year that exceeds our expectation. Total net revenue was $1,190 million, representing a 29% increase year over year, which is a very encouraging reflection affirming the business strategy that we have taken during the difficult period. Our key growth driver, K-12 All Subjects After School Children Business, achieved year-over-year revenue growth of approximately 37%. Our UK Middle School High School All Subjects After School Children Business continued its momentum with a growth of approximately 35%. While our Pop Kids program recorded a growth of approximately 40%, our overseas related business, despite being under continued pressure due to the uncertainty of the pandemic situation and travel restrictions around the globe, showed strong resilience. Although the overseas tax prep recorded revenue decrease of about 12% for the quarter, it is a result that is better than we expected. While the overseas consulting and study tour business recorded a revenue increase of about 11% year over year, which is a very positive result. Our industry leading OMO system has been our core strategy since the start of the pandemic early last year, and it has once again proved to be instrumental in this quarter. The possibility of the unexpected COVID-19 outbreaks in certain parts of China means strong flexibility in migrating students between online and offline classes is absolutely crucial during the challenging period. And our OMO system has been the answer to that. The small wave of COVID-19 outbreaks in around 20 cities in northern China once again highlighted the importance of OMO as they enable us to respond swiftly and migrate the offline class to online, avoiding disruptions of the student class and learning progress. At the same time, in other cities where the pandemic is largely controlled, vast majority of the students migrated from the online classes back to offline learning centers. Encouraged by its effectiveness, we have been committed to expand the reach of our OMO system and are delighted to say that we have piloted the OMO online courses in vast majority of existing cities and around 25 new surrounding satellite cities in the winter semester, attracting a promising number of new customers. 
The OMO system effectively boosts the enrollment and revenue with low customer acquisition costs, and it's becoming the new driver to our business growth. And it, it has solicited an increased uh, uh, contribution to the company's overall revenue this quarter. Total student enrollment in dynamic subjects tutoring and test prep courses in the third physical quarter of 2021 increased by 43% year over year to approximately 2,296,800, which is in line with our expectation. In terms of pricing, per program blend ASP, which is cash revenue divided by total student enrollment, increased by about 7% year-over-year in dollar terms. As for hourly blend ASP, which is gap revenue divided by total teaching hours, increased by 7% year-over-year, and is in line with our normal price increase of about 5 to 8%. To provide a breakdown of hourly blend ASP, please note that UCAN classes increased by 5%, UCAN VIP increased by 1%, Top case increased by 4%, and overseas test prep program increased by 12%, OE over year in RMB terms. Now, I would like to spend some time to talk about this quarter performance across our individual business lines in detail. The pandemic became largely under control in China. Recovery momentum continued to pick up in this quarter across our business lines. Our key revenue driver, K-12, all subjects after school children business, achieved year-over-year -year revenue growth of approximately 37% in dollar terms. Breaking it down, the UK middle school high school business recorded a revenue increase of approximately 35% in dollar terms for the quarter. So enrollment grew approximately 56% year-over-year -year for the quarter. Our pop kids program delivered outstanding results with the revenue up by about 40% in dollar terms for the quarter. Enrollment increased about 61% for the quarter. Our overseas related business, including test prep and consulting business, showed the encouraging sign of the recovery despite facing the most difficult challenges due to the cancellation of the overseas exams and the restriction uh, on travel, as well as the unpredictability of the pandemic situation in different, uh, different parts of the world resting students' hesitance to study abroad. The overseas test prep business recorded a revenue decrease of about 12% in dollar terms for the quarter, in comparison to a decrease of 29% in the last quarter. While the overseas consulting and overseas study tour business recorded revenue increase of about 11% in dollar terms year over year for the quarter, continuing its recovery momentum from last quarter's 6% increase. And finally, VIP personalized class business recorded a cash revenue increase about 36% year over year for the quarter. We continue to carry out our capacity expansion this quarter as we open one new offline training schools in the city of Hengshui. This increased the, the total square meters of classroom area by approximately 17% year over year, 7% quarter over quarter by the end of this quarter. The increase is in line with our expectation. As we gradually ramp up our expansion efforts throughout this academic year to prepare us for recruiting more new students at the start of the following academic year. The expansion in our offline education network has also made sure that we are fully prepared for when the pandemic is over. And our service can resume with strong presence across different Chinese cities. We rolled out the due teacher class model for pop kids program in 58 existing cities for UCAN program in 27 existing cities. With satisfactory customer retention and scalability, we will continue to use this model to increase our market penetration in those markets we have tapped into. An outbreak of COVID-19 has highlighted the importance and demand of online education. We have allocated more resources to this space and invested $59 million in the quarter to improve and maintain our OMO integrated education ecosystem. Our success in piloting the OMO system in around 25 new satellite cities through nearby major cities this quarter 
is yet another testament of how this low cost but high return OMO business model can rapidly become one of the most far-reaching education services in China. We are very optimistic about the growth potential for our OMO system in the next few quarters. Apart from the OMO infrastructure, we have allocated part of the resources to advance the training programs for our teachers to enhance their online and offline integrated teaching skills in response to the growing demand. At the same time, we continue to upgrade our technology platforms and will broaden the usage of the online tools and content in our OMO system for all business lines throughout the whole network as well as further develop the best teaching content and courseware to cater to online and offline integrated education methods. We're glad to see that our industry-leading OMO ecosystem has not only successfully managed to cushion most of the impacts uh, of by the pandemic, but we also see our customer retention rates remain stable. Furthermore, effectively boost the enrollment, and we believe it will continue to play a huge part of the recovery of business in coming quarters. To capture the huge market opportunity in the online education area, Cooler invests more resources in executing new initiatives in online K-12 after-school children business since the second half of last fiscal year, and added a meaningful amount of the customer service representatives and marketing staff. This moves has consequently raised our spending on marketing front in this fiscal year. And our Dongfang Yu Bo Small Side class currently enjoy a significant first mover advantage and stand to benefit from the in increasing demand in low tier cities. Cooler and large size K-12 courses are able to offer, offer the best in-class learning experience through the investment in upgrading app and online platforms, introduce the new education technologies and adding more uh, interactive features to online classes. Cooler also continued to establish teaching training centers in other uh, locations to attract more qualified teachers and tutors provide, and provide a system, systematic training programs. A significant amount of the investment has been allocated to marketing and service enhancement in the past quarters to attract customers during the peak of the pandemic. But the spending started to normalize from this quarter, as we are very cautious in identifying high ROI marketing channels. We focused on improving operational efficiency and emphasizing the word of mouth promotion for English programs with existing brand name advantages, with which will in return keep the average user acquisition costs at a relatively low level. We believe Cooler will continue to quickly acquire new users while enhancing students' retention. Now, I would like to turn the call over to Ms. Uh, Ms. C.C. Zhao. Please go ahead, C.C. Yeah. Now, let me work you through the key um, financial details for the third quarter. Operating costs and expenses for the quarter were $1,089 million, US dollars, representing a 35.1% increase year over year. Non-GAAP operating costs and expenses for the quarter, which exclude share-based compensation expenses, were $1,074.6 million, US dollars, representing a 36.3% increase year over year. Cost of revenue increased by 35.3% year over year to $539.5 million, US dollars, primarily due to increase in teachers' compensation for more teaching hours and higher rental costs for the increasing uh, number of schools and learning centers in operation. The increase in teachers' compensation would also put us in a greater position in keeping teaching talents, um, who are the most important assets in the education industry. Setting and marketing expenses increased by 32% year over year to, to 156.1 million US dollars, represent, uh, primarily due to the addition of uh, marketing staffs with the aim of executing our OMO strategy to capture the new market opportunity post-COVID. GNA expenses for the quarter increased by 36.1% year over year to 383.4 million US dollars. Non-GAAP GNA expenses, which exclude share-based compensation expenses, were 383.3 million US dollars, representing a 40.3% increase year over year. 
total share based compensation expenses, which were allocated to related operating costs and expenses, decreased by 17.8% year over year to 14.4 million US dollars. Operating income for uh, was 101.5 million US dollars, representing a 13.5% decrease year over year. Non-GAAP operating income for the up, uh, for the quarter was 115.9 million US dollars, representing a 14 percent decrease year over year. Operating margin for the quarter was 8.5 percent compared to 12.7 percent in the same period of the prior fiscal year. Non-GAAP operating margin, which excludes share-based compensation expenses for the quarter, was 9.7 percent compared to 14.6 percent in the same period of the prior fiscal year. Net income attributable to New Oriental for the quarter was 151.3 percent, uh, three uh, million U.S. dollars, representing a 9.9 percent increase from the same period of the prior fiscal year. Basic and diluted earnings per ADS attributable to New Oriental were nine, nine cents and nine cents respectively. Non-GAAP net income attributable to New Oriental for the quarter was 163.2 million U.S. dollars representing a 9.9% increase from the same period of the prior fiscal year. Non-GAAP basic and diluted earnings per ADS attributable to New Oriental were 10 cents and 10 cents respectively. Uh, net operating cash flow for the third fiscal quarter of 2021 was approximately 23.3 million US dollars. Capital expenditure for the quarter were 105.8 million US dollars which were primarily attributable to opening of 142 facilities and renovations um, at existing learning centers. Turning to the balance sheet, as of February 28, 2021, New Oriental had cash and cash equivalents of 1,569.8 million US dollars as compared to 915.1 million US dollars as, um, as of May 31, 2020. In addition, the company had uh, 1147.8 million US dollars in term deposits, uh, 3360.7 million US dollars in short-term investment. New Oriental's deferred revenue balance, which is cash collected from registered students uh, for the courses and recognized proportionally as revenue as the instructions were delivered at the end of the third fiscal quarter of fiscal year 2021, was uh, 1,865.7 million US dollars, an increase of 35.7% uh, as compared to uh, 1,675 million US dollars, uh, 1,375 million US dollars um, at the end of the third quarter of fiscal year 2020. Now I'll hand over to Stephen to walk you through um, our outlook and guidance. Looking ahead into the next quarter of fiscal year 2021, we're more clear about the recovery trend of the company's near-term financial performance and the market opportunity over the long run. Our strategic focus and investment approach this year aim at improving the product quality, increasing the teacher's compensation, and enhancing our industry-leading system, which fully reflects our ethos of focusing on the essence of education. In view of the market competition and opportunity to take advantage of the post-COVID market consolidation, we firmly maintain a stable and balanced investment strategy that will improve the quality of our education service with the aim to achieve a sustainable and long-term growth, as opposed to unhealthy short-term growth that often requires excessive investment and higher cost to acquire customers. As such, we will continue to focus on the following key areas. First, we will continue to expand our offline business. We aim to add around 20% capacity, including the new learning centers and expanding classroom area of some existing learning centers for K-12 business in this physical year. We believe our capacity expansion will prepare us to further take market share from other players post-COVID, as we believe some small players without a strong financial position and online class capability may not be able to sustain their business during the, uh, the period. 
We expect the industry will undergo a wave of market consolidation upon the pandemic phase. The fact that we are a major player with a strong financial capacity and fresh offline facilities enable us to further strengthen our market-leading position and penetration. Second, we will continue to leverage our investments into digital technologies and introduce our OMO system in more offline language training and test offerings, especially for our K-12 tutoring business and overseas test prep key business. The usage of online tools and content in our OMO system for all business lines throughout the whole network will be enhanced. To uplift the whole OMO teaching experience, we'll place more efforts in developing the best teaching content and courseware, and also developing more advanced training programs for our teachers. With all, with all the above-mentioned infrastructure in place, we will continue to pilot our OMO online initiatives in major cities with high demand and higher operational efficiency in the surrounding satellite cities. We believe that our OMO initiatives will be one of the, our growth engines to increase our customer acquisition post-COVID, as it can quickly replicate in different parts of China, enabling us to capture the market consolidation opportunity. This revamped new business model will also contribute to our margin recovery when the pandemic is over and further expand our long-term margin target. Here, I have to highlight that all these OMO products are supported by our offline classes. They supplement each other in a hybrid format. Third, during the peak of the pandemic, we saw the necessary need to ramp up the spending on different areas of the business aimed, aimed at migrating the challenges from the pandemic. Now, the, the business, now that the business gradually recovered to a normal level, going forward, we will closely monitor the rise of the cost expenditure across the company to improve overall operational, uh, operating efficiency. Here, I would like to stress that we have great confidence in the fundamentals of our business, which we believe will continue to remain strong. We have been increasing our investment in different strategies, and we remain optimistic of the brighter prospect of our business, and believe our investment now will bring us uh, fruitful returns in the long run. When looking at the near term, and our expectations for the next quarter, we expect total revenue to be in the range of $1,101.9 million to $1,141.8 million, representing a year increase in the range of 38% to 43%. To provide the breakdown of the effect of top line growth for key business lines, K-12 business it's expect to be uh, to grow in the range of 45% to 50%. Overseas test prep program is expect to grow at around 30%. Overseas study consulting and study tour business is expect to be flattish, and the growth of the coolearn.com pure online education platform is expect uh, ex uh, ex 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 to be accelerated all year over year in dollar terms. To conclude, we are now taking all kinds of the operational actions to boost the enrollment and classroom utilization for the spring semester and speed up the recovery of the business after the resumption of the schools and learning centers. We are confident that the demand for after-school tutoring business are gradually picking up and in the process of trending towards a normalized level. I must mention that these expectations reflect our considerations of the latest pandemic and uh, regulatory situation, as well as our current and preliminary view, which is subject to change. At this point, I will take your questions. Operator, please open the call for this. Thank you. Thank you. The question and answer session of this conference call will start in a moment. In order to be fair to all callers who wish to ask questions, we will take one question at a time from each caller. If you have more than one question, please request to join the question queue again after your first question has been addressed. To ask a question today, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. 
If you wish to cancel your request, please press the pound or hash key. Your first question comes from Felix Liu from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, management. Thank you very much for taking my questions and congratulations on the strong quarter. Uh, my question is on regulation. Uh, I know during the the past few months, uh, the regulator has made some, you know, relatively strict comments on the after school tutoring regulations. So, uh, could, could you share some color uh, about your take on potential regulation direction? Uh, will there be any, you know, tightening in terms of uh, uh, new learning center license? Uh, AST as well as uh, uh, after school tutoring scheduling. Uh, thank you very much. Felix, uh, it's a good question. You know, uh, actually, the government's intention to tighten after the uh, after school children business uh, policy is not uh, uh, a surprise to us. Uh, as you know, it has been uh, discuss, uh, dis discussed uh, uh, the, uh, for a long time since 2018. And uh, we believe the, uh, the regulations efforts will foster a positive environment for the whole market to improve the market standard and enhance the, uh, the average teaching quality of the whole market. And, uh, and, I think, I, and I think, you know, we are aligned with the government policy and also full and fully committed to work together with the government to build a better uh, the, the education market in China. I think the reform details are yet to be announced. So now we are uh, able to provide a full analysis on our business impact. But at this uh, stage, we do not foresee any material impact on our top line. And uh, we do expect some, uh, uh, the admin cost may increase in a short, a short term to meet the, uh, the uh, new requirement. Uh, you know, as the largest uh, the uh, provider, uh, you know, New Rental, I think we uh, we uh, we we have the strong capital to be compliant with the the potential reform, the policy reform, and at the same time, we expect the China's after school tutoring market to further con uh, uh, be consolidated, and we have been in preparation for this, and we're ready to further take more market share from uh, the other players, Felix. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mark Lee from City. Please ask a question. Uh, hi, management. Uh, congratulations uh, on the very strong uh, results. Uh, may I ask uh, for the upcoming uh, summer promotions, uh, what's our plan or any target uh, we can share? Uh, especially, uh, I see uh, maybe with the rising synergy with our OMO model. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we started to, to do the summer promotions uh, four or five years ago. And last year, you know, we got over one million uh, student enrollments from the summer promotion campaign. And the retention rate after the summer uh, was uh, uh, somewhere around 60%, you know, as was uh, uh, the, uh, the good number. And, uh, and this year, I think we will, de we will do the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, and we do expect the summer promotion enrollment uh, will be booming uh, in the coming summer. And we believe the, uh, the retention rate after summer will be higher than that of last year. You know, typically, we, uh, we, got, we got the student enrollment from the summer promotion. Uh, you know, typically, we charge four or 500 uh, RMB per course. Actually, it's, just, it's, it's not a free course just like some of uh, the, uh, the discounted courses. And uh, I think the, uh, the summer promotion will bring us the whole year, uh, the, uh, uh, the enrollment growth, and it will not hit the margin for the whole year. Mark. Thank you. Our next question comes from Candice Chen from Daiwa. Please go ahead. Hi, Cici and, and, and Stephen. Thank you for taking my question and congratulations Congratulations on this uh, very strong set of results. Um, so uh, my question is regarding the OMO. So can you uh, share with us the revenue contribution of OMO uh, currently? And also, um, what will the 
be the percentage of uh, OMO contribution uh, in long run as you expect, and um, how would be the long-term margin profile for, for OMO? Thank you. You know, while the OMO uh, model uh, only contributed a single digit to the overall revenue this quarter, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the, the ability to virtually uh, reach both major and satellite cities across China in some province, I think it will grow rapidly in the coming quarters and become the major driver to, the, to our business growth. You know, we expect the, uh, the revenue contribution from the OMO next year will be somewhere around 10%. And uh, the margin profile of the OMO, uh, you know, theoretically, the OMO model, the margin of the OMO model should be a little bit higher than the traditional offline classes. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we just started the OMO model since the uh, last year, so we still need more time to testify the business model and, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and the margin profile. But so far, so good. I think the, the progress of the OMO business, uh, you know, is, expect, uh, to, uh, is better than we expected, uh, and, uh, and the OMO model will con contribute more and more revenue going forward in the, in the uh, in the next uh, physical year, and the, uh, in, in the, even in the next two to three years. Thank you. Our next question comes from Tian Ho from TH Capital. Please ask a question. Hi, CC, Stephen. Uh, congratulations on a strong quarter. Uh, so I see the overseas recover pretty nicely, and uh, also some data shows, uh, even though uh, this year was, I, you know, uh, Pandemic. However, the students apply to uh, overseas school. The number of that was really high. So uh, you know, I, I wonder, you know, what's the going, what's the outlook for the overseas uh, uh, testing and consulting this part of the business? What's the outlook for that? You know, what do you see from uh, from today's data? Thank you. Thanks, Tia. Yeah. You know, I think the uh, the overseas test lab, overseas related business, uh, you know, recovery, uh, you know, is coming, and uh, you know, re revenue decline of the overseas test lab this quarter was 12 percent. You know, uh, last quarter the revenue decline was uh, 29 percent, and two quarters uh, ago the revenue decline was 50 percent in dollar terms. So it showed the encouraging sign of the recovery of the uh, overseas test lab business. And, uh, and uh, you, we gave the guidance. We gave the guidance of the Q4. The overseas test threat business will be uh, increased by uh, somewhere around 30%, 30%. So, it's, uh, so I think uh, the, uh, you will see the, even the higher uh, the recovery of the overseas uh, test threat business. And, uh, yeah, I, I know we had the low base last year. But anyway, I think this, uh, we're in the pr process of the, uh, the, uh, the recovery of the, of the overseas test lab business. And the consulting business, uh, you know, this quarter we, uh, we, we got the increase by 11%. And next year we guided the revenue growth of the consulting business will be flattish. You know, typically Q4 will be the, 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 uh, the, uh, the high season of the overseas consulting business. But, uh, you know, during the hard time, I think the performance of the overseas test lab and consulting business, uh, I think it's much better than we expected several quarters ago. And next year, I believe the overseas real estate business will grow to some extent for the, uh, for the uh, physical year 2022. Uh, Thank you, Tian. Thank you. Our next question comes from Shang Zhong from Morgan Stanley. Please ask a question. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, um, looking at Beijing, I think the, um, uh, the, the learning center's uh, reopening is slightly uh, slow. Uh, so any color on this uh, uh, government approval process? Uh, what the key uh, items they are uh, doing the uh, uh, inspecta uh, inspection now? And um, um, do you think, uh, uh, so based on this, uh, what's uh, your, do you have a, a capacity uh, expansion plan for next year can, sh can be shared with us now? Thank you. Uh, so far, you know, we opened uh, almost all the learning centers except for Beijing City. And in Beijing, you know, typically, uh, we, we have uh, over 100 learning centers in Beijing, but we 
uh, we open we open uh, single digit learning centers now, and and uh, but uh, you know we expect that the more we will open more learning centers, uh, we open more learning centers in Beijing, and. Uh, the, uh, this year, you know, we, we plan to open 20% of the capacity. You know, uh, first three quarter, we opened at 17%. And uh, next year, so far, we haven't uh, uh, finished our budget of next year uh, of the expense plan. So I think the next uh, earnings call in the next quarter, I will share with you our expansion plan. And so far, we don't want to change our expansion plan for the next year. But we, we, we still need more time to finalize our budget. Of next year. Yeah, uh, Zhou Xiang, in addition to the Beijing situation, you know, I want to remind you all that uh, because we have the OMO system so that we have all the students uh, doing the spring course online uh, very smoothly, actually, uh, even with the uh, uh, closure of uh, offline learning centers, but still all the students can, can take their classes online and uh, you know the retention is very stable, um, and uh, also you know overall the uh, um, since the uh, pandemics we're seeing Beijing's um, situation is hotter than other cities and uh, revenue declined. Uh, but you know la uh, the the reported Q3 quarter and forecast Q4 quarter, Beijing's revenue uh, trend is better, uh, getting better and better. Mm. Okay, right. Thank you. Our next question comes from Alex Xie from Credit Suisse. Please ask a question. Um, hi, management. Thank you for taking my questions and congratulations on very strong set of results. Uh, so just please comment on the margin trend uh, in, in the next quarter and also for the, uh, for the next fiscal year. Um, think, think, uh, I think we have a low base uh, in the fourth quarter of the last fiscal year. Thank you. Yeah, I think with the revenue growth uh, recovery is in the process. Uh, this is the first. And uh, on the market front, I think, uh, you know, we do have the, uh, I think we have the, the, the great uh, the business opportunity uh, uh, in the market front. And, uh, but, you know, we are doing the uh, several, uh, the, uh, the investment now, uh, actually since the uh, two quarters ago. You know, we, we make the uh, learning center expansion by 20% this year. And we firmly raised the teacher salary uh, twice this year. And also we spend more money on the R&D uh, for the OMO. And also we hired more uh, the, ground, uh, the marketing team to do the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the marketing activities. So, but, but, but I think the, all the above mentioned investments will make us the, uh, the, uh, the fully prepared for the future. So I think uh, it will. Uh, I think it will uh, in impact the margin for short uh, short term, but uh, I, I still believe the margin decline for the Q4 will be narrowed down compared to this quarter, and uh, we're confident confident that we are able to deliver the margin expansion uh, 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 after the pandemic is over, and we don't want to change the mid long term margin guidance. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Our next question comes from D.S. Kim from J.P. Morgan. Please ask your question. Hi. Uh, good evening, sir, and uh, congrats on the strong bid uh, across the board. Maybe before I start my question, can I just follow up on your point that when you say margin decline would be narrowed versus this quarter, are you referring to last year or pre-COVID level? And, and I have my own question after this. I mean, it's a year-over-year uh, comparison. Year-over-year. Year. Okay, it's thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is regarding Coolern, and uh, there seems to be some reports locally that uh, there are some business adjustments at that uh, entity, according to some media. And uh, could you help us understand what's the key change in priority here, plus potential margin impact? Say, for instance, uh, Coolern has been making about 40 plus million US dollar operating losses every quarter in the past five, six quarters. But shall we expect the absolute size of the losses uh, from 40 million plus to narrow into a fiscal year 2022? Or shall we only think about the margin improvement, not the absolute size of the losses? Thank you again. Uh yeah, uh, uh, DS Kim, you know, I, I can't say too much about the detailed numbers uh, of the cooler. 
but I can share with you our strategy. You know, Cooler has uh, spent more money uh, on the R&D and marketing uh, in the past quarters. But, uh, you know, we started to control the marketing, uh, uh, the marketing activities and money uh, in this quarter. And going forward, I think we will be very cautious uh, on the market spending. Okay? And, uh, you know, as I said, our strategic focus is to uh, invest more money on, to improve the teaching quality. We're training the teachers, we're hiring the talent people rather than the heavy spending on the marketing. So we call this is the, uh, the, the essence of the education. And uh, so I, I do believe the, uh, the revenue of the cooler of next quarter will be accelerated. And uh, the margin drag from the cooler to the EDU uh, will be smaller and smaller going forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Lucy Yu from Bank of America Securities. Please ask a question. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, I have a follow-up question on the margin. So uh, in the fourth quarter, we have a relatively lower base, and especially with the uh, K-12 start to grow like 45 to 50 percent, uh, should we expect some operating leverage on the K-12 side? At least the K-12 margin should be improving, right? So what is actually dragging the margin to be lower uh, than the same period of last year? Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we believe we have the leverage on the K-12 business. Because of the you know the uh, business recovered very uh, very fast, and but but as I said you know with this we're doing some uh, the investments for the future like the, te- the raising the teacher salary and open more learning centers and also to uh, invest more on the OMO model. You know we hire uh, you know the minimum uh, number of the uh, the marketing staff to to do the grant uh, promotion, and uh, so. I think uh, you still need uh, maybe more time to, uh, to see the margin uh, expansion, maybe one more quarter. But I do believe the margin profile in the Q4 will be better than this quarter, than Q3. Lucy. We'll Thank you. Our next question comes from Jesse Xu from Nomura. Please ask your question. Um, good evening, management. Um, thank you for taking my question, and congratulations for a very strong quarter and also a very strong uh, revenue guidance for 4Q. Uh, my question is uh, also regarding offline mobilization in Beijing. Uh, I want to understand what is our base scenario here, and uh, uh, what about the worst scenario? And if Beijing learning centers cannot be opened before summer, uh, what will uh, be, uh, what will the uh, impact? Uh, to our summer promotional campaign. Thanks. You know, uh, so far uh, we uh, finished the uh, 17% expansion in the first uh, three quarters of this fiscal year. So we, we still need 2 to 3% new capacity in Q4 to, uh, to get the point of the, to get the number of the, uh, the 20% capacity ex- expansion. I, I think we are uh, we are pre- uh, prepared for the uh, the capacity. Uh, the capacity is prepared for the coming summer uh, promotion. And uh, don't forget, we have the OMO model compared to uh, last year. You know, our OMO model is much better than, than, than that of last year. And, uh, you know, I, I think we will do uh, some of the summer promotion by the OMO model. I think the online elements will help us to do the summer promotion, uh, you know, uh, rather than the, the, the traditional, typical 100% offline. To, uh, the, uh, the format. Thank you. Our next question comes from Christine Cho from Goldman Sachs. Please ask a question. Thank you so much. Uh, congrats on uh, a solid uh, results this quarter, Stephen and CC. Um, seems like the capacity growth this quarter of 17% looks a bit softer. Uh, and also, it seems like you're targeting around 20% growth, which seems to be kind of the low end of the 20 to 25% midterm target. Uh, just wondering if this is temporary or are there any lasting considerations such as, for example, like um, OMO expansion plans or any regulatory concerns that you have here? Uh, thank you. 
You know, yeah, we uh, we we aim to add around 20% capacity expansion uh, for the whole year, uh, fiscal year 2021 20, this year, and uh, uh, and last year uh, we uh, expanded 26% new learning centers. You know, typically we ramp up the learning center from zero to 100%. Uh, uh, you know, by three to four years. So that means we have enough uh, the capacity to ro- to ramp up. Uh, and uh, also, you know, since the last year, we moved some classroom area of the overseas test rep to K-12 business because, you know, we suffered, we suffered the, 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 the negative impact from the overseas test rep business. And I think it will help us to prepare for the, uh, for the, uh, the potential, uh, the, uh, the uh, growth of the K-12 business. Right, thank you. So we are now approaching the end of the conference call. I will turn the call back to New Oriental's Executive President and CFO, Mr. Stephen Yang, for his closing remarks. Again, thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me or any of our investor relations representatives. Thank you. Right, thank you. So that does conclude our conference for today. Thank you for participating. You may all disconnect.